Stephen Turner Minution is an American investment banker and film producer who served as the 77th United States Secretary of the Treasury as part of the cabinet of Donald Trump from 2017 to 2021. Previously, Minution had been a hedge fund manager and investor. Upon graduating from Yale University in 1985, Minution joined the investment bank Goldman Sachs where his father, Robert E. Minution, was a general partner. Minution worked at Goldman Sachs for 17 years, eventually becoming its chief information officer. After he left Goldman Sachs in 2002, he worked for and founded several hedge funds. Minution was a member of Sears Holdings's board of directors from 2005 until December 2016, and prior to this, Minution served on Kmart's board of directors. After Sears went bankrupt, the company that formerly owned it sued Minution and ex-CEO Edward Lampert for asset stripping during their tenure. During the financial crisis of 2007-2008, Minution bought failed residential lender IndyMac. He changed the name to One West Bank and rebuilt the bank, then sold it to CAT Group in 2015. During his time as One West CEO and chairman, the bank became embroiled in several lawsuits over questionable foreclosures. Minution joined Trump's presidential campaign in 2016, and was named National Finance Chairman for the campaign. On February 13, 2017, Minution was confirmed by the U.S. Senate as Secretary of the Treasury by a vote of 53 to 47. As Secretary of the Treasury, Minution supported the Trump tax cuts and the tax reform of 2017 and advocated reducing corporate tax rates. In regard to regulatory policy, Minution supported President Trump's partial repeal of the Dodd-Frank Act, citing the complexity of the legislation. Minution is listed in the list of people and organizations named in the Paradise Papers. Chapter 1: Early Life and Education. Stephen Minution was born on December 21, 1962, in New York City, the second youngest son in his family. Minution's family is Jewish. He is the son of Robert E. Minution of Washington, Connecticut, and Elaine Turner Cooper of New York. Robert Minution was a partner at Goldman Sachs in charge of equity trading, and a member of the management committee. He is also the founder of an art gallery in New York City, the Minution Gallery. Minution's great-grandfather, Aaron Minution, a Russian-born diamond dealer who later resided in Belgium, emigrated to the U.S. in 1916. Minution attended Riverdale Country School in New York City. He graduated from Yale University in 1985 with a bachelor's degree in economics. At Yale, Minution was publisher of the Yale Daily News, and was also initiated into Skull and Bones in 1985. While a student at Yale, Minution drove a Porsche and lived at New Haven's Taft Hotel. Minution's first job was as a trainee at investment bank Salomon Brothers in the early 1980s, while still studying at Yale. Chapter 2 Finance and Banking Career Chapter 2 Section 1 Goldman Sachs. Minution graduated from Yale in 1985 and started working for Goldman Sachs, where his father had been employed since 1957. Minution started in the mortgage department, and became a partner at Goldman in 1994. Until he left the company in 2002, Minution held the following positions as a partner. November 1994, December 1998, Head of the Mortgage Securities Department. December 1998, November 1999, Overseeing Mortgages, U.S. Governments, Money Markets, and Municipals at Fixed Income, Currency, and Commodities Division. December 1999, February 2001, Member of the Executive Committee and Co-Head of the Technology Operating Committee. February 2001, December 2001, Executive Vice President and Co-Chief Information Officer. December 2001-2002, Executive Vice President, Member of the Management Committee, 
and Chief Information Officer Minushin left Goldman Sachs in 2002 after 17 years of employment, with an estimated $46 million of company stock and $12.6 million in compensation that he received in the months prior to his departure. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Hedge Funds After he left Goldman Sachs in 2002, Minushin briefly worked as Vice Chairman of Hedge Fund ESL Investments, which is owned by his Yale roommate Edward Lampert. From 2003 to 2004 he worked as Chief Executive Officer at SFM Capital Management, a fund backed by George Soros. Minushin founded a hedge fund called, Dune Capital Management, named for a spot near his house in the Hamptons, in 2004 with two former Goldman partners. After its founding, Minushin served as the CEO of the company. The firm invested in at least two Donald Trump projects, the Trump International Hotel and Tower in Honolulu and its namesake in Chicago. Dune Capital Management and other lenders to the skyscraper in Chicago were sued by Trump, before a settlement was reached. Minution was outbid by loan star funds on a portfolio of residential mortgage-backed collateralized debt obligations being sold by Merrill Lynch during the financial crisis, which sold for $6.70 billion. Minution has been criticized for his use of offshore entities for investment purposes as a hedge fund manager, which is a common practice in the industry. Minushin has stated, in no way did I use to avoid U.S. taxes. Chapter 2 Section 3, 1. West. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 2 Purchase of IndyMac and Other Loan Portfolios. In 2009, a group led by Minushin bought California-based residential lender IndyMac, which had been in receivership by the FDIC and owned $23.5 billion in commercial loans, mortgages, and mortgage-backed securities. The purchase price was a $4.7 billion discount to its book value. Minution's investment group included George Soros, hedge fund manager John Paulson, former Goldman Sachs executive J. Christopher Flowers, and Dell computer founder Michael Dell. The FDIC agreed to retain some of the more problematic assets of the bank, and signed a loss-sharing agreement. The FDIC was estimated to be required to pay $2.4 billion to IndyMac under the shared loss agreement. After purchasing IndyMac, renamed One West Bank, Minushin moved into a 20,000-square-foot house in Bel Air to begin his tenure as CEO and chairman. One West then bought several other failed banks including First Federal Bank of California in 2009 and La Jolla Bank in 2010. Furthermore, One West bought a portfolio belonging to City Holdings for $1.4 billion. One West was profitable one year after Minution had bought it, and it became the largest bank of Southern California, with assets worth $27 billion. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 3 Sale to CAT In 2015, Minution sold One West to CAT Group for $3.4 billion. After the acquisition by CAT, Minution remained at One West and became a member of CAT Group's board of directors. As of August 2016, Minution owned $97 million in CAT Group stock, most of which he had received in exchange for his stake in One West. On December 2, 2016, Minution resigned from the board of directors of CIT as a result of his selection as nominee for Secretary of the Treasury. Chapter 2 Section 3 Subsection 4 Foreclosures One West was criticized for aggressively foreclosing on homeowners. In the five years following Minution's acquisition of One West, the bank foreclosed on 36,000 homes in California, leading local activists to begin calling Minution the foreclosure king. The high foreclosure rate might have been a result of the loss-sharing agreement with the FDIC, whereby the FDIC had to reimburse One West for losses. According to the New York Times, One West was involved in a string of lawsuits over questionable foreclosures, and settled several cases for millions of dollars. Because of these foreclosures, Around 100 protesters of Occupy Los Angeles gathered outside Minution's home in October 2011 and held signs that read Make Banks Pay. 
Two California Fair Housing Groups filed complaints to the federal government alleging that one West had violated the Fair Housing Act by not lending money to African Americans, Hispanics, and Asians. In November 2016, after one West was sold to CAT, the California Reinvestment Coalition submitted a Freedom of Information Act request to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development to learn more about CAT's reverse mortgage subsidiary, Financial Freedom. According to the HUD's response, CAT slash financial freedom foreclosed on 16,220 federally insured reverse mortgages from April 2009 to April 2016. This represented about 39% of all federally insured reverse mortgage foreclosures during that time. CRC estimated that financial freedom serviced only about 17% of the market and thus was foreclosing more than twice as often as its competitors. CAT Group disclosed to investors that it had received subpoenas from HUD's Office of the Inspector General in the third and fourth quarters of 2015. In November 2016, Two non-profits filed a complaint with the Department of Housing and Urban Development, alleging redlining by one West Bank. In 2017, a leaked internal memo from the California Attorney General's office was published, stating that the prosecutor's office had found more than a thousand violations of foreclosure law by one West during Minutian's tenure. The prosecutor, Carmela Harris, had declined to file a civil enforcement suit. Chapter 3 film production career. In 2004, he founded Dune Entertainment as a side business, which was the financier of a number of large-budget films, mostly for 20th Century Fox, including the X-Men film franchise and Avatar. In 2012, after Dune's deal with 20th Century Fox ended, Minutian teamed up with filmmaker Brett Ratner and Australian businessman James Packer to merge his Dune Entertainment Company with Ratner and Packer's newly founded Rat Pack Entertainment joint venture, resulting in Rat Pack Dune Entertainment, which then struck a financing deal with Warner Brothers between 2013 and 2018. Rat Pack Dune financed many films for Warner Brothers, including American Sniper and Mad Max, Fury Road. Minutian was co-chairman of the trio's movie company, Relativity Media, but left seven months before it went bankrupt. A source close to the company said he had resigned because of the potential for a conflict of interest between his duties at Relativity and One West. He and other investors reportedly lost $80 million. Chapter 3 Section 1 – Filmography Chapter 3 Section 2 – Donations before joining the presidential campaign of Donald Trump in 2016, Mnuchin had been involved in politics only by donating money to campaigns. Between 1995 and 2014, he donated over $120,000 to political organizations, PACs, politicians, and political parties. His contributions to candidates included 11 donations to Republicans and 36 donations to Democrats. The campaigns of Al Gore, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, Barack Obama, and Mitt Romney were among those to which he donated money. Minutian said most of those donations were favors for friends. Between June and September 2016, Minutian donated over $400,000 to the Republican Party, including donations to Paul Ryan and Donald Trump. Earlier in 2016, Minutian had donated $4,000 to Democrats Kamala Harris and Michael Wilds. Chapter 3 Section 3 2016 Presidential Campaign of Donald Trump Minutian was an early supporter of Trump, and attended his victory party after the New York Republican primary victory on April 19, 2016, for which he received a last-minute invitation. He was called the following day by Trump who asked him if he wanted to be the national finance chairman of his campaign. Minutian, who later said in an interview he had known Trump for over 15 years, accepted the offer. In a statement announcing the appointment, Trump said, Stephen is a professional at the highest level, with an extensive and very successful financial background. He also said Minutian would bring unprecedented experience and expertise that would benefit the Republican Party. After being appointed as the Trump campaign's main fundraiser, 
Minushin said, it's a great privilege to be working with Mr. Trump to create a world-class finance organization to support the campaign in the general election. Minushin worked with Republican National Committee counterpart Louis Eisenberg on a late developing joint operation for the committee and the Trump campaign. Before Minushin's appointment, no large-scale fundraising operation had been started for the Trump campaign. The late summer fundraising goal was close to $500 million. The New York Times described Minushin's role during the campaign as relatively behind the scenes, and the newspaper noticed he never seemed to seek the spotlight. During an interview, Minushin said that because of his connection to the Trump campaign, a lot of people in California and New York wanted to stop being friends. After Trump won the election, he announced that Minushin would join the transition team on November 11. Chapter 3 Section 4 Political Views In a November 30, 2016, interview on CNBC, Minushin called it the Trump administration's job to make sure that the average American has wage increases and good jobs. Furthermore, he said his priority was getting a sustained growth of GDP of 3% or 4%. He said in order to get there, our number one priority is tax reform. Minushin said he would reduce corporate taxes to 15%, cut taxes for the middle class, and simplify the tax system. When asked about trade, he said he believed in trade deals with individual countries, as opposed to regional trade deals. Minushin said, this president is going to have open communication with business leaders, when asked about keeping jobs from being offshored to Mexico. During the interview, he also said he wants to strip back parts of Dodd-Frank because he argued it was too complicated, and it prevented banks from lending. He called the stripping back of Dodd-Frank the number one priority on the regulatory side. Chapter 4, Secretary of the Treasury Chapter 4 Section 1 nomination and confirmation. On November 30, 2016, Donald Trump announced on his website, that he would nominate Minushin as United States Secretary of the Treasury. In the statement, Trump called Minushin a world-class financier, banker, and businessman, and he said Minushin played an important role in developing his plan to build a dynamic, booming economy. Minushin himself said he was honored to have the opportunity to serve our great country in this important role. He called Trump's economic agenda bold one that creates good-paying jobs and defends the American worker. On February 1, 2017, the Senate Finance Committee approved his nomination by a vote of 11 to 0 with all Democrats boycotting the vote, sending the nomination to the Senate floor. After the nomination was announced, Minushin resigned from his position on the Board of Trustees of the Museum of Contemporary Art, Los Angeles, to which he had donated between $100,000 and $250,000. When the pick was announced, Minushin was also a member of the boards of UCLA Health System, the New York Presbyterian Hospital, and the Los Angeles Police Foundation. The New York Times noted that Minushin's selection fits uneasily with much of Mr. Trump's campaign attacks on the financial industry. For example, an ad of Trump's campaign said Goldman Sachs, CEO had robbed working class. Minushin is the third former Goldman Sachs executive to serve in the job, after Hank Paulson, under President George W. Bush, and Robert Rubin, under President Bill Clinton, in the 2000s and 1990s, respectively. During his Senate confirmation hearing on January 19, 2017, Minushin was criticized by Democrats for one West's foreclosed practices. Minushin said, Since I was first nominated to serve as Treasury Secretary, I have been maligned as taking advantage of others' hardships in order to earn a buck. Nothing could be further from the truth. During the hearing, it was also noted that Minushin had failed to disclose $95 million of real estate that he owned and his role as director of Dune Capital International, an investment fund in a tax haven. Minushin described the emissions as mistakes made amid a mountain of bureaucracy. Following Trump's January 2017 announcement about an investigation into voter registration, it was discovered that Minushin is registered to vote in both California and New York. On February 13, 2017, Minushin was confirmed as Secretary of the Treasury by a vote of 53 to 47. 
he received unanimous support from Senate Republicans but from only one Senate Democrat, Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Chapter 4 Section 2 Tenure Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 2 Artificial Intelligence Minutian, when asked in an interview with Mike Allen of Axios whether he was worried about air displacing jobs, replied, not at all, I think we are so far away from that, 50 or 100 years, it's not even on my radar screen. Former Treasury Secretary Lawrence Summers was among critics of the statement, likening it to climate denial and creationism. Fortune columnist Alan Murray, noting the dispute, said he thought the core of the misunderstanding is the term artificial intelligence. While he felt Minutian expressed understanding of the role of technology in the labor market and also worried that the Secretary and President Donald Trump were both in their ways underestimating technology's impact, he thought the climate denial charge was excessive. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 3 Environment In January 2020, Minutian dismissed environmental activist Greta Thunberg, saying she should go to college and study economics before weighing in on policy. Others responded to Minutian, noting that thousands of economists with PhDs had signed a letter calling for taxation of carbon dioxide emissions. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 4 Federal Budget and Benefits On June 12, 2017, Minutian denied the debt ceiling not being raised before the August recess would cease federal government operations, and said Congress should weigh the option of changing the timing so that the debt ceiling matches the budget process so we don't have to deal with this in this format during a House Appropriations Committee hearing. On June 14, during a prepared testimony ahead of the House Subcommittee on State, Foreign Operations, and Related Programs, Minutian said the budget proposal on the part of the Trump administration should send a message that the international financial institutions need to operate more efficiently. On July 13, in response to limited lifespans being reported of Social Security and Medicaid, Minutian said, to help make these programs sustainable into the future, we should focus on strengthening the economy today. Compounding growth will help ease projected shortfalls. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 5 Taxes Minutian is a member of the so-called Big Six, a group of politicians convened to write a tax reform proposal that incorporated input from members of the House of Representatives, Senate, and White House. In addition to Minutian, the group consists of Senators Orrin Hatch and Mitch McConnell, Rep. Kevin Brady and Paul Ryan, and National Economic Council Director Gary Cohen. Shortly after the November 2016 election, Minutian, as the planned nominee for Secretary of the Treasury, stated in an interview with CNBC that any reductions we have in upper income taxes will be offset by less deductions so that there will be no absolute tax cut for the upper class, which Senator Ron Wyden subsequently called the Minutian rule during his Senate confirmation hearing. Brad McMillan, Chief Investment Officer for Commonwealth Financial Network, said a preliminary tax reform proposal by Trump in April 2017 allocates much of the tax relief to the wealthy and could increase the budget deficit. In a May 2017 event moderated by CNBC, Minutian stated the intent was to deliver a middle-income tax cut, but that final results depended on the actions of Congress. Minutian appeared with White House Director of Legislative Affairs Mark Short in a July 2017 event, when they vowed to have the tax reform proposal before Congress after it resumed operations on September 5, and Minutian added that lowering the top rate elimination of huge deductions. So, for most people in the top rate, they're not going to get a tax cut. Minutian walked back the Minutian rule in a September 2017 interview with CNN prior to the release of the proposed tax reforms, saying the no absolute tax cut for the upper class phrase was never a promise, never a pledge, it was what the president's objective was. Under the tax reform proposal, the top tax rate would decline from 39.6 to 35 percent, and the budget deficit would likely increase. During an appearance at the Milken Institute Global Conference on May 1, 2017, Minutian said the White House and House Republicans were united in views on tax reductions, we're all on the same page. On 80% of the details, we're in agreement. Another 20%, 
we need to work through. During a conference in Ottawa on June 9, Minutian said government tax receipts were coming in somewhat lower, but that this did not concern the administration. While appearing on ABC News on July 9, Minutian confirmed the administration was not considering a tax increase on the American upper class and the upcoming tax plan would finance itself. Minutian advocated for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, a bill expected to add $1.5 trillion to the deficit. Minutian claimed the bill would pay for itself by causing explosive economic growth, he promised the Treasury was working on an analysis that showed that, and that the analysis would be made public before Congress voted on the legislation. However, on November 30, 2017, sources within the Treasury Department said Minutian had ordered no analysis of the tax plan, and that there was no Treasury analysis that showed that the tax cuts would pay for themselves. In December 2017, the Treasury released a one-page report on the tax plan which acknowledged that the plan would not pay for itself through economic growth. In May 2018, Minutian instructed his staff to accept a non-low income tract in Story County, Nevada, as an opportunity zone shortly after attending a Milken Institute event in Beverly Hills with Michael Milken. Milken was already an investor in the Nevada tract. In August 2018, Minutian attended a Milken Institute conference on Opportunity Zones in the Hamptons with Milken and later accepted a flight to Los Angeles with Milken on his private jet. Treasury later issued a regulatory guidance that allows prior investors to benefit from newly designated Opportunity Zones. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 6 International Relations At a March 18, 2017, meeting of G20 country finance ministers, Minutian supported the Trump administration's trade policy of economic protectionism. During an April 24, 2017, White House briefing, Minutian announced Department of Treasury sanctions against the Syrian Scientific Studies and Research Center. He said the sanctions were designed to create accountability for the Bashar al-Assad regime and its supporters in the wake of their violations both of UN Security Council resolutions and of the Chemical Weapons Convention. On June 29th, Minutian announced the Bank of Dandong, a Chinese bank, had sanctions imposed on it by the US. He charged the bank with acting as a gateway for North Korea to access the US and international financial systems. On March 15, 2018, Minutian unveiled a series of sanctions, first time under Sazar as well as Executive Order 13694, against various Russian entities and individuals. Beginning in November 2019, Minutian facilitated negotiations between the governments of Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan with respect to the filling and operation of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam after tripartite negotiations between the three countries languished after eight years of talks. Egypt has opposed the dam, fearing that it will reduce the amount of water it receives from the Nile. In February 2020, Minutian stated that final testing and filling should not take place without an agreement. Ethiopian Foreign Minister Jeju Andargachu said Minutian's advice to Ethiopia was ill-advised. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 7 Support for President Trump While briefing reporters on April 26, Minutian said President Trump has no intention to release his tax returns, asserting that Trump has released plenty of information. In the August 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, opposing the removal of Confederate statues, protesters included neo-Nazis and Klansmen, leading to violent conflicts. President Trump said there was blame on both sides. Several hundred of Minutian's Yale classmates drafted a letter urging him to resign from the administration in protest. Minutian responded by saying, while I find it hard to believe I should have to defend myself on this, or the president, I feel compelled to let you know that the president in no way, shape, or form, believes that neo-Nazi and other hate groups who endorse violence are equivalent to groups that demonstrate in peaceful and lawful ways. On September 24, Minutian appeared on This Week and State of the Union to defend Trump's call to get that son of a bitch off the field right now, referring to the protests by professional athletes starting in 2016, most notably marked by Colin Kaepernick kneeling during the pregame singing of the national anthem. Minutian said, it's not about race, it's not about free speech. 
they can do free speech on their own time, his is about respect for the military and first responders in the country. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 8 Comments on Lego Batman Movie In March 2017, Manushin drew ethics concerns as regarding a statement he had made urging parents to send all your kids to Lego Batman during an interview with Axios, apparently endorsing the Lego Batman movie which he was an executive producer of. Just earlier in the interview, Manushin acknowledged, I'm not allowed to promote anything that I'm involved in. In response, Manushin wrote in a letter to Walter Shaw but the Office of Government Ethics that he should not have made that statement, and assured the Oge that it was not my intention to make a product endorsement. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 9 Divestment from Prior Businesses In May 2017, it was reported that Manushin's fiancé, Louise Linton, had succeeded him as the interim CEO of Dune Entertainment effective February 2017. Minushin had stepped down from the role as part of his ethics agreement to divest his business roles in preparation for his appointment as Secretary of the Treasury. Linton's announcement of her role at Dune Entertainment drew the attention of Senator Ron Wyden, a member of the Senate Finance Committee, who questioned whether the appointment of Linton meant Minushin had fully divested from the company. Although the Department of the Treasury replied that she was serving in an uncompensated capacity, Linton resigned as interim CEO later in May. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 10 Use of Government Aircraft Following criticism of his use of a United States Air Force jet on a trip to Kentucky that involved viewing the solar eclipse, the Treasury Department's Office of the Inspector General opened up an inquiry into Minution's use of government aircraft. The watchdog group Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington filed a Freedom of Information Act request regarding Minution's use of government aircraft. After the government failed to respond to the FOIA request, Crew sued the Department of the Treasury to release the documents. Minution denied the trip, was related to viewing the solar eclipse, saying, people in Kentucky took very seriously. Being a New Yorker, I don't have any interest in watching the eclipse. Minution, who was accompanied by his wife Louise Linton on the trip, reimbursed the government for Linton's travel to Kentucky, which amounted to $595 out of a total cost of $26,900. During the OIG's investigation into Minution's use of government aircraft, it was revealed that Minution had requested a military jet for his honeymoon travel to Europe in June 2017. Minution stated that, as a member of the United States National Security Council, he needed access to secure communications during his honeymoon, but withdrew his request for the military jet after an alternative was identified. Minution stated, I'm very sensitive to the use of government funds. I've never asked the government to pay for my personal travel, the story was quite misreported. The OIG investigation also showed Minution had taken a USAFC 37A, the military designation of the Gulf Stream V, to return from New York to Washington on August 15 after flying to New York commercially. Although the request for travel on the military jet was initiated by Minution's office, the aircraft had previously been used to fly Transportation Secretary Elaine Zhao from Joint Base Andrews to Titabo Airport. Minution's return flight lasted less than an hour and had an operating cost of at least $25,000. The OIG released its report on October 4, 2017, concluding that there was no violation of law in these requests and uses of government aircraft by Minution, but also expressing concern regarding a disconnect between the standard of proof called for in the Daily Memo, and the actual amount of proof provided by Treasury and accepted by the White House in justifying these trip requests. The referenced Daily Memo, was issued by then White House Chief of Staff William M. Daly on April 4, 2011, and it stated the standards for use of government aircraft by senior executive branch officials were given in OMB Circular A-126, dated February 10, 1993. The Daily Memo also states that travel using military aircraft must be considered a White House support mission, taken at the specific direction of the President under one of a set of limited circumstances that make commercial transportation unacceptable. 
The typical reimbursement paid by requesting federal executive agencies covers only the cost of an equivalent coach ticket on a commercial flight. In the report, the OIG reviewed nine travel requests by Minution for military air transportation since March 2017, of which seven were approved and taken, one was withdrawn, and one was approved with travel pending in late October 2017. The total cost of the seven trips taken was $811,800 calculated from per hour cost and operating hours for the specific aircraft, or Air Force provided direct costs of operations. Two of the flights, taken to Europe in March and May 2017, each cost more than $300,000. On one flight, to Ottawa in June, Minution was accompanied by his then fiancée Linton. The total cost of the Ottawa trip, was $16,350, and the reimbursement repaid for Linton's cost of travel, was $744. Due to an inconsistency in the records provided for the trip to New York on August 15, the OIG opened a second inquiry in October 2017, to assure that have in fact received all relevant records. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 11 Student Heckling Incident Minution spoke at UCLA on February 26, 2018, where he was heckled and initially blocked the video from being released, dot the university said in a statement that Minution, who at first subsequently withdrew his approval for the video to be posted online, later gave consent for the video to be published. Chapter 5, Personal Life Minution's mother was a long-time investor with Bernie Madoff. After his mother died in early 2005, Minution and his brother liquidated her investments, making $3.2 million. A Madoff trustee sued to retrieve the money from the Newchins, but a court ruled that the Madoff trust could recoup money only from those who had cashed out less than two years before the December 2008 collapse of Madoff's company. Chapter 5 Section 1, Marriages From 1992 to 1999, Minution was married to Catherine Lee McCarver. In 1999, Minution married Heather de Forrest Crosby, and they had three children together. Heather Minution was active in philanthropy and Asiam yoga. After he bought Indy Mac, Minution moved to a 21,000 square foot, $26.5 million house in Bel Air, Los Angeles, California, because the company's headquarters was in Pasadena. They divorced in 2014. Minution married actress Louise Linton on June 24, 2017. Vice President Mike Pence presided over the ceremony. Chapter 5 Section 2, Nonprofit Work Minution served as a member of the Development Board of Yale University, as a board member of the Riverdale Country School, as a member of the National Board and senior member of the nonprofit youth organization Junior Achievement, to which he had donated money, and as a board member of the Hirschhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden.